we are here at Karama and this is of course Antonio Abatetis. I mean, he's the man here to be. <laughs> Hello. Antonio, nice to meet Hello. you. Hello. Thank you very much. We know you're in the truck, but uh, this is a Mini Cooper. Yep. Yeah, not only a racer, but you're also uh, yeah, treating Mini Coopers. What do you do exactly? Uh, well, I mean, it's a long story, but for the moment what I do is I have a small workshop, you know, and I do some kind of repair or rebuild, you know, of these classic uh, minis. And we want to have fun, and this is why it's like a ride with me. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, no. yeah. Good. Good. Tim Frost is yeah. there, <laughs> waving the Spanish flag. Fan number one. <laughs> So let's have a look at your history. Thanks very much for bringing those photos. I mean, this is spectacular. Is that here in Karama? <laughs> yes, yes, this is me at Harama. This is also me with uh, one of my father's first car. Wow. You know? And then this is my father here in, in the Harama at the beginning. You see, there's only just the, the towers that's there. Great yeah. history with Mini, but right now it's the Maxi. Yeah. It's the final the episode one. here <laughs> at Karama the of the Goodyear one. FIA ETRC. <laughs> Um, you had, as we were saying in Spanish, a bit malas suerte, a bit bad luck. Um, what do you think about this final episode for you? Are you prepared well? Well, I think that uh, we are prepared well, you know. I mean, it's, uh, for me, it's my home race, so it's a little bit of pressure, of course. But uh, yeah, I hope that uh, everything is okay, that we don't have this bad luck and we can, we can do some good results. I think it's going to be a lot of people here, so I hope to, to do it well and, uh, and have fun, you know? I mean, I think it's, it's the last race, so we have to have fun. The final weekend of the 2022 season got underway with Norbert Kish on pole position once again and Jochen Hahn alongside him. The second row was made up of Antonio Albathetti and Sasha Lenz, while Heinrich Clemens Hecker started from the pit lane due to a penalty after practice. Norbert Kish got another tidy start and managed to hold on to his lead ahead of Jochen, while everybody else didn't really fan out as much in the early stages as we often see in the races, people opting to just stay in their own lane, knowing that we had pretty much a hairpin for turn one. With a little bit of pushing and shoving further back in the pack, Andre Kurzim certainly getting involved and being shoved sideways at certain points. Adam Lachko even getting a nudge as well after being outqualified by his teammate Theo Calve for the first time this season. But Norbert Kish held on nice and tidy at the front of the field, while behind it got a little bit feisty. Andre Kurzim here tipping Adam Lachko through the hairpin, Jamie Anderson getting hung out to dry and being forced to go on a bit of a recovery drive for the rest of the encounter. Antonio Albacete seemed under pressure from Sasha Lenz in the opening stages. Theo Calve with the front row seat of it all as well. The German was hoping to try and take second place away from Jochen Hahn in the championship in the final meeting, but Antonio was not going to make it very easy at all. Soon enough, the gap started to open up, and the drivers further down the order that had been involved in the RG Bargy, i.e. Jamie Anderson, started to make moves, getting past Rodriguez in the first couple of laps. He would then set his sights on Andre Kurzim and hopefully limit the damage that Teo Calve was going to do in the Promoters Cup Championship as well. Jamie launched himself into a fantastic chase and Andre was ready to defend as he is so good at doing. Another driver looking to defend, also driving an Iveco, was Jochen Hahn. Antonio Albacete's home pace here in Spain was seemingly very difficult to withstand legend of Spanish motorsport tried and tried again to just close the gap and force Jochen into a mistake but it just did not seem enough and Jochen held firm. Andre Kurzin was certainly trying to hold firm even though he didn't keep all four wheels on the racetrack. Jamie Anderson was piling massive amounts of pressure onto him and it seemed like it would be any moment when the German would finally crack and let him through. 
Jamie had proved many times this season that he's been a very well-developed driver and he's getting quicker and quicker all the time. And his move came at turn one. A little bit of a lock-up meant there was contact down the inside and despite it being rough stuff, the position stood and he got through and one step closer to Teo Calve. Jamie later mentioned that he'd had clutch slip throughout the entire race as well, so it was something that he'd have to be driving around. Norbert Kish didn't have to drive around anything though, he took the first victory of the weekend ahead of Jochen Hahn and Antonio Albathetti who scored a podium on home soil in the first race of his home event. For Norbert Kish, congratulations, how was the race? Uh, gotcha, that was my revenge from the last situation in the interview. <laughs> Yes, did it so. <laughs> a little insider between us. So, uh, honestly, uh, great performance today. Your race from the start, as you said, but of course, you need to look out on the left hand side. What was going on? How did you manage to pass through? Yes, uh, well, it, it was working very well today as well in the free practices as well. The setup was very nice right away. Um, very important pole position uh, to be on the inside in the first turn and, yeah, had a good start. Not only was the start good for Norbert Kish, but the rest of it as well. And it was actually a good start for his weekend. Another race victory in the bag, his 15th of the 2022 season. Jochen Hahn and Antonio Albacete continued to add to their incredible podium records. Sasha Lenz finishing fourth meant that he lost a couple of points to Jochen Hahn in the overall championship. Adam Lachko was strong in fifth, while Teo Calve won the Promoters' Cup in the first race of the weekend. He also extended his gap slightly over Jamie Anderson in the Promoters' Cup. The aforementioned problems with Jamie Anderson's clutch would be a little bit too much for them to continue with, so between the races the team applied for exemption from Park Ferme so they could get it repaired and get back on the grid, but this would mean that Jamie would have to start right at the back. Teo Calve, meanwhile, was on the front row, so the Promoters' Cup rivals were almost bookinged in the order. It was Andre Kurzem on pole position once again. He often gets to the front of these reverse grid races with Adam Lachko and Sasha Lenz on row two. Sasha hoping to claw more points back from Jochen Hahn in the overall standings. Kurzem got a nice tidy getaway. Teo Calvo was not able to slot in on the right-hand side, so Sasha Lenz gave him a bit of a shove and tried to help him along around the outside into turn one. Sasha broke nice and early to make sure there wasn't further contact. Very nip and tuck around turn two. And everybody else just about making it through nice and tidy. We'd seen fantastic defensive drives from Kurzim and Calve before, so it was certainly a very difficult pairing at the front of the field for anybody to overtake should they come through to take the win. The sunlight was certainly getting lower at Harama, and it was a beautiful setting for the second race of the weekend. Jamie Anderson began his comeback drive from the very rear end of the field and the drivers in this train near the front certainly knew that he was coming. Norbert Kish had got ahead of Jochen Hahn and was hoping to try and upset the drivers ahead of him by taking more and more places as the race went on but a humongous train developed in the early stages and everybody wondered what would give first and whether it would break up at all. The need for some fantastic viewing though as all of our wonderful trucks were so, so close together throughout the entire race. Steffi Halm was having to hold off Jamie Anderson for quite a while, felt like a battle that lasted absolutely forever as the rest of the train at the front continued to move away. Eventually the move came down the inside into turn one for Jamie, much like it had in the earlier race on Andre Kurzin, this time with less contact. Teo Calve at certain points fell back a little bit from Andre Kurzim into the clutches of his teammate Adam Lachko, but Adam wasn't pushing him too hard. He wasn't really piling that much pressure on, and he wasn't going to take away second place from his Bagheera teammate. Norbert Kish was certainly piling the pressure on, though, really giving it to Antonio Albacete. The two of them had wrapped up the team's championship for the year, but that meant now that they could get the gloves off and battle as hard as they would have wanted to throughout the rest of the season. Norby then set his sights on Sasha Lenz, who was hoping, really hoping, that he would not come through and take more valuable points away from him in the battle for second place in the championship. Jochen Hahn, meanwhile, just waited at the back of all of it, knowing that he still had an advantage over Sasha and would only lose three points total 
when it came to the end of the race. Teo Calve did give it a go on the final lap, trying to get past Andre Kurzim. The Don't Touch Racing Machine was very ironically involved in a lot of contact, but Adam Latchko, watching from behind, wanted to get in on it as well. Going into Monza, the two Bagheera Racing teammates nearly made contact, but it was on the exit when Teo had to come back on that the two of them rubbed together, clearly killing the momentum and handing the victory to Andre Kurzim. Teo Calve certainly didn't want to give up second place, but Andre Kurzim, much like he did last year at Harama, won the second race of the weekend with Bagheera scoring their first double podium of the year. It was very tense though on the cooldown lap as we wondered quite what the teammates would be saying to each other, but Andre Kurzim was an incredibly happy boy. It had been quite a while since we'd seen the Don't Touch Racing Machine on the top step, and considering it was his birthday the day before, this was a great belated birthday present. Happy birthday, <laughs> delayed. <laughs> what a celebration it is for you today. How do you feel? Yes, it's great. Uh, the first the first win for the season, it's uh, very important for us. And yes, we are very happy. It was a clean race, though. How did you manage to get uh, out of trouble? Yes, uh, I know because everybody knows the tire are a big problem here. And yes, I can manage my tires. I can manage the speed of uh, Adam and Theo. And yes, now we can win the race. Huge smiles and celebrations all round in the second race of the weekend. Both the Bagheera ZM Racing Freightliners on the podium and Andre Kurzin back on the top step for the ninth time in his truck racing career. The team had had a lot of bad luck and a big challenge throughout the 2022 campaign and it was great to see him finally get back up there where he belongs. He's shown that he can defend very well and so has Teo Calve, the two of them first and second, with Lachko third ahead of Sasha Lenz and Norbert Kish, Antonio Albertetti and Jochen Hahn sixth and seventh. The latter going into the final race day of the season with a very easy shot of securing second overall in the championship. <laughs> After an incredible Saturday of racing with very entertaining battles all the way through the field, we had a bit of a different story to start off our second day of racing. Norbert Kish was back on the front row alongside Adam Lachko, Sasha Lenz and Antonio Albacete on row two. The Spaniard would get down the inside into turn one, but that's when all the mayhem would begin. He locked up and hit the side of Adam Lachko. Jamie Anderson got nudged by Sasha Lenz and went wide. Jochen Hahn then ran into the back of Sasha Lenz and the trucks mounted one another, littering the circuit with debris and fluid. And unfortunately, the red flags would have to come out. Jochen Hahn's truck and Sasha Lenz's stuck together, much like we saw earlier in the season at Most. A look here from our Sensata Smart Witness judicial review cameras shows the exact moment that Jochen's truck became pretty much airborne. There were a number of drivers that were involved with a lot of contact and very lucky to get away with it how they did. As you can see, these race starts can be very busy and very compact. But hats off to the emergency crews and everybody involved for the recovery effort afterwards. It was a phenomenal effort and meant we could go racing again in race three at full race distance as well. <laughs> The entire field would make it back onto the grid with Norbert Kish once again starting alongside Adam Lachko and Sasha Lenz cleared to race after the damage on the rear of the truck was repaired. He would start alongside Al Antonio Albatetti once again with Jamie Anderson on his own on row three where Jochen Hahn's truck was not. Sasha Lenz had another busy start on his hands. Antonio Albatetti once again getting in front to the right hand side of the field. Jamie then had a long run around the outside of him and tried to make more positions at the start of this one, hoping to open up his gap to Teo Calve and claw more points back in the championship in the Promoters' Cup. Seemed like everybody had learned their lesson after the red flag, and certainly drivers were taking care not to smash into each other, or then again, were they? Teo Calve had a bit of a move down the inside of Steffi Helm, but unfortunately there was contact between the two of them. They would carry on, and the entire field would then make it around the rest of the lap nice and tidy. Calve would have quite a bit of damage on the front end of his truck and it seemed like at certain points of the circuit he was struggling. Jose Rodriguez going down the inside here into the hairpin at Le Mans. 
Frenchman would have to fight very hard to try and claw back the time and claw back the positions. But everyone was excited to see how he'd get on. Everyone was also excited to see Antonio Albacete in another podium position, hoping to see him on the podium with more silverware to his name. Jamie Anderson was holding on to fifth position at this point, just watching his teammate Sasha Lenz move on in the race, but not really close the gap to Antonio. It was Sasha's golden opportunity to take big points away from Jochen Hahn in the overall championship, and it was certainly becoming more and more tense after the big twist with Jochen not racing from the first accident. Antonio started to then get a little bit closer to Adam Lachko, the Bagheera ZM Racing Freightliner not looking so fantastic in the final couple of laps of the race. But as ever, supreme at the very front of the field, Norbert Kish continued to push on. He came round the final corner, avoided the debris from Shane Brereton and took his second race of the weekend, his 16th of the season. And for the second race running, Antonio Albatetti had to concede for third, with Adam Lachko finishing the race in second, Sasha Lenz in fourth. It was becoming more and more clear as the weekend went on that Norbert Kish and his team were there just to enjoy themselves now at the end of the season, and the wins kept on coming, and the pace continued to be insatiable as ever. Seventh place for Teo Calvay and second in the Promoters' Cup in that race also gave him enough points to become the 2022 Promoters' Cup champion for Bagheera ZM Racing. Congratulations, Calvay. You did it. Your new, new Promoters' Cup champion. And you've been telling your team, first of all, from all the pushes from the back, very, very lively. But let's first talk about this title. What does it mean to you? Yeah, it's really nice to, to win the title this year. It was really not easy year, so I think the best uh, gift we can have. Um, I'm really happy. I really want to thank the team. Uh, it was, uh, like I said, not easy year, quite unlucky races. And, uh, but I learned, I learned a lot, and I think uh, it's really nice for, for the team. And, um, yeah, thank you. Teo Calve, a very deserving champion, and once again, Norbert Kish, a very deserving race winner. Spirits were certainly high, despite the red flag that had occurred earlier. And also from the paddock, we heard that Jochenheim was fine, and his truck would be back out for the final race of the season. Adam Lachko got another podium and a strong second place. And Jamie Anderson was very gracious in defeat in the Promoters' Cup, even though he did win the third race of the weekend in the category. The sunshine was out, and so were the smiles to come with it as well. Everybody now gearing themselves up for the last race of the year, and everybody certainly looking forward to a bit of a winter break. Norbert Kish had a fantastic extra win added onto his tally with Adam Lachko and Antonio Albatetti completing the podium. Sasha Lenz in fourth with also... Oh God. There was an interesting prospect on the horizon for the final race of the season. Not only did we have Andre Kersim and Teo Calve in the front row for the second time this weekend, but in the 2021 results, Norbert Kirsch won races one and three, while Andre Kersim won race two, and Teo Calve won race four. With Teo starting second on the grid, it was very possible that we were going to see the same four race winners in the same races that we did last year. The race got underway, and it seemed even more likely from that point as Teo Calve got the race lead and moved across in front of Andre Kersim. He got a push from Jamie Anderson, which helped Jamie go into second, albeit temporarily. He went straight on into the gravel at the first corner and ended up right at the back of the field with all the work in the world to do. It was a huge shame for Jamie to have such a massive task in what was going to be a very enjoyable final race of the year. Matteo Calve in the early stages stayed clear of Andre Kurzim despite the fact that Andre's front end had fallen off the truck altogether. No contact between those two, though, as Sasha Lenz now beckoned in the rearview mirror, hoping to make more ground and, of course, get more points. All he needed to do was outscore Jochen by four. Jochen Hahn had had an incredible opening lap, and Sasha Lenz needed to be careful, but contact with Andre Kurzin put him in the gravel and threw his second place in the championship right down the pan. 
Jochenham was now only a couple of positions back in the pack and he knew that he wouldn't have to push too far with Lenz only being right ahead and you get one extra point per position in the reverse grid race and he knew that the calculations were going on all throughout the calculations were certainly going on for Steffi Halm. She did not spend an entire second of this race not looking in a mirror. Adam Latchko was the first driver to try and have a go as things went on. And Norbert Kish got a little impatient at points, waiting for Adam to make a move, hoping to have his turn to try and overtake the white and orange of Echo. Once again, though, we had a bit of a train forming at her armour. Norbert Kish managed to get alongside Adam Latchko, but still wasn't able to make the move as they went through the hairpin at the bottom of the hill. Steffi was once again absolutely relentless in her defence. Another driver near the front of the field that we've seen defend so, so well before. Norbert Kish and Adam Latchko ended up having a little bit of contact as the move finally got made. And now Norby was hoping to get himself onto the podium one more time this season. It was a very scary moment though as Sasha Lenz tried to overtake Adam Latchko and was moved over towards the wall. He had to back out of it, but eventually would try once again to get through. Nothing deterring the German scoring more and more championship points in every effort he could make to try and get away from Jochen Hahn. All the time, Theo Calve and Andre Kurzin were both disappearing up the road. They had a good few seconds between each of them, but the main championship fight in the middle of the field was the most enticing battle going on. That is, until Norbert Kish tried to have a go at Steffi Halm. She would have to work so, so hard to keep him behind in the closing stages, and she would manage to succeed, believe it or not. Kersim had a little bit of damage later on in the race, but this would temporarily halt him as it flew off before too long and did not cut into the tyre and didn't cause any lasting damage. Once again, though, we were celebrating the fact that Steffi is such an exciting driver to have in the championship. She was holding off some of the absolute titans of the category. Norbert Kish, Sasha Lenz and Jochen Hahn all piling in behind to try and make a move, but Steffi held firm. Sasha Lenz's race came to an unfortunate premature end when something erupted in the back end of the truck, threw fluid absolutely everywhere and spun him round very, very quickly. He knew at this point that his championship charge into second was over and Jochen Hahn would be the man to take P2 in the title race. It also split up the group a little bit, to be honest with you. Jamie Anderson was then trying to chase down Adam Latchko, who in turn had quite a bit of daylight ahead to Jochen Hahn. Norbert Kish was launching one final attack on Steffi Halm to try and take the position before the race was done and it was amazing to see that she still managed to keep him back. Sasha had spent a moment just lamenting what had gone on in his truck while he could only sit on the sidelines and watch this titanic battle continue at the front of the field. Time and time again, Norby found himself around the outside of Steffi Halm, but it just wouldn't work. And after a little bit of contact, he was shoveled out, and Jochen Hahn was then in the position of rear gunner for Iveco teammate Steffi Halm, and that would be that. Latchko had also benefited and got ahead of the Hungarian as well. But with Norby being champion, he knew that he didn't have to push too hard to try and score extra places and, of course, extra points. Steffi could now enjoy the race for what it was after not having to look into her mirror for the final few moments. Jochen Hahn playing fair, but Teo Calve playing an absolute blinder and winning the race by over 11 seconds from Andre Kurzim. A perfect finish to the season, especially for the Promoters' Cup champion and Bagheera, who would announce not long after that it would be their last race in the championship. Second place went the way of Andre Kurzim and Steffi Halm would manage to hold on to third. Adam Latchko beating Jochen Hahn to the line at the very last second. But Jochen Hahn was confirmed P2 in the championship and everything was all tied up and all rough edges were smoothed out. Then came the burnouts after the race. Andre Kurzim certainly lighting up the rears and Antonio Albathetti celebrating. Even Heinrich Clemens Hecker got in on the donuts as well giving John Newell absolutely nowhere to go, and a number of trucks came to a halt on the circuit as the entertainment continued. Teo Calve, though, would give him and his team an amazing end to the season. The driver that had just become the Promoters' Cup champion certainly rounded out what was almost a perfect weekend. He'd developed so much over the last few years and got quicker and quicker, and finally his potential was really shining through.
Uh, I think it's great. How did you celebrate right now with a team and family? Yeah, it's so nice. It's not, uh, so nice to win the last uh, race of the season. Uh, and for the team, it's uh, just to, to thank you for all the work this season, all the job done. It was a really hard season, but everybody did the job. We, we did everything we could and uh, look, we finished by a victory. So it's really, really nice. I'm really happy. It was a very popular podium to round out the final race of the season. Teo Calve, Andre Kurzim and Steffi Halm on the top three spots. Behind them, the epic battle resulted in Adam Lachko finishing fourth, ahead of Jochen Hahn in fifth, Norbert Kirsch in sixth, and Jamie Anderson, runner-up in the Promoters' Cup, finishing seventh. Jamie had finished sixth in the championship outright and would be rated as a Titan driver next season with a lot of excitement on the horizon. Sasha Lenz misses out on second in the championship after being four laps down due to the failure on the back end of his truck. By the end of it all in 2022, Norbert Kirsch had amassed over 400 points, an incredible feat from the Hungarian driver, once again proving just how fast he can be. Theo Calve wins the Promoters' Cup ahead of Jamie Anderson and Shane Brereton, the latter announcing that this would be his last season in the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship.